you've been shopping around for a set of great quality bookshelf speakers, the Audio Engine brand name has probably crossed your list. For over a decade, they've been making an excellent speaker called the Audio Engine A5. And this is the Audio Engine A5 Wireless, and it adds Bluetooth connectivity to the mix. If you're a jackless phone owner or just someone who hates cables, these are absolutely worth checking out. So let's get into it. How do these perform? How do they sound? And should you buy them? With many products, saying something's more of the same is actually a detractor, but in this case, because the A5 Plus have been some of our favorite bookshelf size speakers for so long, we actually really like that they haven't changed their great formula. If you've ever seen a set of Audio Engine A5 Plus speakers before, the new A5 Plus wireless will be very familiar. They're these rounded studio style boxes, and the only real visual difference between the two sets of speakers, wired and wireless, is that the wireless have a tweeter that's directly in the center of the speaker box rather than slightly offset at the top. As with on the other A5 Plus models, the real hallmark of the speaker is this woven five inch woofer. And that will give you plenty of punchy low end and a nice low mid range. There's a long thin baseboard at the top of the back of each speaker, but the left side is where all the magic happens. Up top, you have a Bluetooth antenna and pairing button. Below that, you have a 3.5 millimeter input for wired listening, then an RCA input for plugging in a CD player or even a turntable, RCA output, and of course, speaker post outputs to send sound to the right speaker. Then there's an on-off switch, a couple fuses, and a place to plug in your power. As with most modern Bluetooth speakers, pairing to the Audio Engine A5 Plus wireless is quite easy. On the back, you just click the pairing button, it will blink, and then you find the speakers in the drop down menu on your phone, tablet, or laptop. One thing we've always loved about Audio Engine's A5 speakers is their beautiful wide stereo image, and these absolutely match that. When you play heavily stereo mixed songs like those from Mac DeMarco or other modern artists who like to hard pan instruments and vocals left or right, you get this beautiful, wide, vivid soundstage. And that's very impressive from a speaker this size. As with previous versions of the A5, the high end is crisp and dynamic and really reveals the full spectrum of acoustic instruments, but down low they're not lacking either. There's plenty of punch when you listen to hip hop from Kendrick Lamar or your other favorite modern artists. And even if you're listening to throwback music, they have this way of making music vibrant and lively that many other speakers kind of miss in favor of being more clinical. Another great thing about the A5 Plus wireless is that they have quite a vast array of inputs. So whether you're plugging in your phone to the 3.5 millimeter input or even plugging a turntable or CD player into the back, you can actually use these as a listening hub where many other wireless speakers are pretty much Bluetooth or nothing. There is one small quirk though. These do not have an input selector switch. So if you have a 3.5 millimeter cable plugged in and it happens to be sitting on something metal, you can sometimes hear weird interference and it's not the Bluetooth, it's actually that it's playing both Bluetooth audio and wired audio simultaneously. So that's something to watch out for. It's not a big hang up, but definitely pay attention. With the same great looks and fantastic sound that we've loved since we've been carrying around an iPod color, but with wireless connectivity added to the mix, these are a great speaker that is worth adding to any modern listening arsenal. I'm going to be reviewing a pair of speakers to be used as my main computer speakers to replace my now defunct M Audio AV40s, which all of a sudden I noticed the left speaker started playing a lot softer than the right one. And after looking online, I found out this was a known issue that these speakers tend to develop over time. So after having them for only a little less than three years, unfortunately, it was already time for a replacement, uh, which kind of sucks because in my opinion, any, any decent set of speakers should be able to last at least five years, if not 10 or more. In any event, in my search for replacements, I set out with a few general requirements. Since I listen to a lot of and all types of music, as well as do a lot of PC gaming, the first requirement was that I wanted a big upgrade in overall audio quality without having to go to a surround sound setup and also something that wouldn't require any additional sound cards or having to use any type of balanced inputs like those found in the back of a lot of studio monitors. I also wanted the ability to be able to easily add a subwoofer to the setup down the road. Finally, since I knew I wanted a big step up in sound, I knew I would need to go with something bigger than the 4-inch drivers used in the M-Audios, while at the same time not so big that they wouldn't be able to fit on my desk comfortably. After much research and going back and forth between deciding if I wanted to get some 
proper studio monitors and possibly deal with the necessity of having to use a sound card or some kind of external amp, I decided to purchase the Audio Engine A5 Plus Bs. So let's take a closer look at the speakers themselves and I'll get them set up, see how they perform, tell you what I did and didn't like about them and then go ahead and give you my overall thoughts and experience with the speakers after having used them extensively over the last few weeks and let you know if they're worthy of a place on your desk as your primary computer speakers. Now the Audio Engine A5 Pluses use 5 inch Kevlar woofer cones with a pair of 3 quarter inch silk dome style tweeters. Uh, this is, the size of the tweeters is important to note, I'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, but in my shopping I found using a 5 inch woofer size to be the ideal trade off between sound quality, being able to get the full sound range, and size of speaker. They also retail for $399, which was actually more than I wanted to spend, but with speakers, as with most other things in life, you kind of get what you pay for. And most of the other speakers in like the $150 to $200 range typically use smaller 4-inch drivers, and I would really only recommend that if space and or budget are a major concern. But in any event, here they are. Here you can see they're pretty substantial speaker. Um, the measurements, you know, they're like, I think, 12 inches tall. You know, they're 8 inches deep and about 7 inches across. They're probably about the biggest you would really want to go on a typical desk. You know, I just have the standard rectangle desk, but any bigger than this are going to start to dominate your whole desk setup. So I think these are about the biggest size speakers you can kind of get away with for computer speakers. But anyway, you can see they're pretty big, a lot bigger than the M audios you see in the background here. So, you know, and that's partly, in fact, because, like I said, these use five inch woofers. And then you can see here the three quarter inch um, silk dome tweeters they decided to use. You have the volume, here's the volume button on the, on the front. It's forever rotating, so there's no stop or start to it. Which is not really ideal to me because you don't really know how far away from maximum or minimum you are, so you're left kind of guessing. Now these two things in the front here, one is the, well I'll get to this in a second, but the first one is the LED for the volume button, and I'll show you how it operates in this other shot is when you, every, the volume knob does kind of click at every rotation and then the LED blinks for every click you do and then when you get to the maximum the LED stops blinking. But still that's not a really good, it's just not really a good way to do it because when you're at max and you want to turn it down or up, you kind of have to count from how far are you are away from the LED stopping so it makes it tough to adjust the volume on there accurately. But not a huge deal because with these hooked up to your speaker Usually you set this one time and then you're going to pretty much con control it with the computer controls itself. Uh, but if you have people over that are a lot of time messing with your speaker knobs, that can become a little bit of a noise. But anyways, no deal breaker there, just something to note. But anyway, that's kind of the front, like I say. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this is the IR, just the infrared um, sensor here, which is used to control the speakers with this remote because the, the audio engines comes with this cool little remote which basically it's kind of just a nice bonus feature to have so I have my computer in my bedroom so having this by the bedside is kind of nice to be able to do volume up down mute and then this puts some computers or the speakers to sleep directly so anyways that's kind of that's the remote um, you can see here is the bass port in the back this do give a pretty good bass reproduction I'm gonna go over all the sound um, information in a second I just kind of wanted to go over the features here you do get a USB power this gives you five volts so if you want to power up or charge your phone or any kind of device on your desk, it has that, that output, which is kind of cool. Here's your analog input if you wanted to, uh, say, plug in a phone directly using the like headphone output. Um, and then it has RCA inputs here and then RCA outputs here for if you wanted to hook up like a subwoofer. Um, and then it uses, here's the speaker wire. This is output speaker wire to output here so what you do is you um, run your signal from your computer to here and then the speaker wires connect from here go to here because this is the amp is all just in this one speaker you see it has a pretty large heat sink on the back for um, cooling off the amplifier um, anyway so this is the on and off button and then you have your voltage is two it's either 120 or 240 and then obviously just your power plug so that's pretty much how the speaker looks but anyways I'm gonna show I'm gonna get them put back up on the speaker stands and just go over with you kind of how how they sounded overall so I'll just go ahead and give you a couple of really quick audio clips. Again, it's going to be difficult because I'm just using the mic on my phone and YouTube's going to compress it. So just kind of give you an idea. It's almost pointless, but I'll you know, play it anyway. <laughs> I probably have this about half, maybe 65% volume on the knob. It's 24. 
four, so that's a quarter on the computer, and you'll see they get really, really loud. details and stuff in cello, classical music. So let me go ahead and give you a quick sample of some other music here when there's a little bit of vocals. some nice it gives off a nice good bass response you can tell the music sounds really good I don't know how it's kind of gonna come across with the mic and through YouTube probably not that great but you just take my word for it they, they sound very very good Here they are all wired up and back on top of the speaker stands to hopefully give you an idea of what they look like all set up. If you notice from earlier shots, I kind of moved out the speaker stands to the far, edge of, far edges of the desk as far as I could possibly do. And this opened up the sound stage nicely and improved the sound quality quite a bit actually. And just to give you a point of reference, this is a 27 inch monitor, uh, which I think balances with the speakers really well size wise. And I really ended up liking how they looked. Uh, but on to the sound. So I critically listened to these speakers for at least 15 hours, probably closer to 20, not just having them on in the background, and they flat out sounded fantastic. Now I listened to everything from Drake to Vivaldi, and I sampled rock and vocal artists with some nice guitar play like Ben Howard, and a whole lot of other hip hop and uh, EDM. And I would say these speakers sounded great with all types of music. Their size gave a really, really rich and full sound overall with punchy bass down to about the 50, 50 hertz range. So, so nice punchy bass, but nothing, nothing on the really, really low end, obviously, because they're only five, in, five inch uh, woofers. They were also very clear and detailed, as I could really hear artists taking breaths and breathing in the studio and also fingers moving up and down fretboards nicely. Also, I would actually like a little bit more definition when it came to string instruments and some classical samples, but they absolutely destroyed my old M audios. Um, there really was no comparison, but I don't think that's a big surprise because they cost over three times as much as well. Now for gaming performance while playing VF4, it was definitely a more visceral experience overall, even without a sub attached. Uh, I noticed more detail in sniper fire, bullets whizzing by um, when guns were being shot next to me, and also with jets flying overhead and just other little random sound effects coming through clear all over the maps really, so really, really nice there. Um, the other thing is that these speakers can also play really, really freaking loud, like painfully loud if you wanted, uh, which kind of brings me to my next point. They're marketed as powered bookshelf speakers, and as such, I think they are more suited for use in filling a large to extra large room, as they kind of easily filled my apartment, even at just 40% volume level, and at 60%, I couldn't even really sit in front of them anymore. Um, but do, uh, don't get me wrong though, I really, I love playing music really loud and having speakers with lots of headroom, but I found the best listening position for these were 10 to 15, 10 to 15 feet away when I was either sitting on my bed or back in the, my chair in the corner. Um, that's when they kind of sounded their absolute best. For PC and desktop usage, I really don't think that these are ideal as you need to have them turned up to moderate levels to get all the detail from them and even at these levels they were kind of fatiguing to my ears and slightly harsh even to the point that they became uncomfortable for any amount of extended listening I didn't end up turning them back down 
Uh, I suspect that the sound on these would warm up as you approach the recommended 40 to 50 hour break-in period, but my guess is that some of this harshness comes from the fact they use a smaller three-quarter inch tweeter and they just don't really seem designed for near field um, listening or use. In fact, Audio Engine actually recommends that these speakers be set six feet apart for optimum sound and at that distance they don't really fit on most desks anymore. This to me kind of says that they are more suited for playing music in a medium to large size room, not for sitting two feet away from them. Those issues aside, there was also an issue of white noise that came from the tweeters even when no audio signal was being output. This was only noticeable when my ear was right up next to the speaker and although I couldn't hear it from my desk chair, I knew it was there and for some reason it really bothered me. Um, it sounds like a really faint white noise or hiss that was coming from either the power unit in the speaker or the amp. Um, and I couldn't get rid of it with different cables or plugging it into an outlet either. And according to Audio Engine, actually this noise is normal, uh, which is kind of unacceptable if you ask me. I should also bring up that I purchased the digital analog converter that Audio Engine uh, produces as well. It's called the Audio Engine D1. If you don't know what a DAC is, it is, it's a unit that converts the digital signal from your computer to the analog one for use on your speakers instead of having your PC do the conversion inside on probably like the lowest cost chip possible. Uh, what you do is you plug the digital Toslink or USB connection from your computer and then output the RCAs um, directly to your speakers. Typically, external DACs provide much improved sound versus the chip on your motherboard and you can get DACs that cost into the thousands of dollars. Um, the D1 goes for 169 bucks and definitely improved the overall sound of the speakers. For lack of a better term, it made the speakers kind of come alive. Uh, I would say it gave it a solid 20% improvement to the overall quality and clarity of the speakers. That's kind of hard to describe in words, but it was a subtle but noticeable improvement. However, if you add that to the cost of the speakers, are now at almost 600 bucks for the whole setup, which at that price point opens up a lot of other options. So to me, the DAC isn't something I would buy right off the bat if I was to get these speakers, but would be something I would consider upgrading to after having used the speakers on their own for a couple years, getting used to how they sound, then adding a DAC after that for a really nice bump in sound quality for not that much more money at that, at that point. Um, side note, the D1 also has a 3.5 millimeter output, which if you use headphones with your computer will improve the audio of your headphones as well.